Today I am playing Cardio X, an education game for cardiologists. That's actually quite a good uh, game in itself as well. Uh, the catch is I'm actually an eye doctor and haven't done any cardiology stuff for quite a while. So let's see how much cardiology can, I can remember. I'm gonna do a fresh case that I haven't done before, which is this one here called Irritable Inspiration. So we've got a 74 year old male who presents to the urgent care clinic with progressive and severe dyspnea, that's breathlessness, for two months. The patient has past medical history of Parkinson's, has been treated with levodopa. Uh, Cabagoline was added about five months ago. So we have loads of diagnoses here that we can diagnose the patient with, but that is the objective of this case. So we've actually got to do stuff first and we can do three things at a time, three action points and tests count as two action points and advanced testing three action points. So as for anything, the first thing we want to do is ask questions. We want to take about take a history. So I think we should ask about onset and duration. We should ask about any chest pain and quality of the pain. And we should ask about any aggravating factors. And that's three action points straight away. So, onset and duration of this breathlessness. It's started out of nowhere about two months ago and it's progressively been getting worse. Uh, and now breathless without any activity. Okay. It also tells you what diseases are eliminated from the information it gives you. Which is not really necessary, but whatever. Uh, chest pain, no chest pain. So that rules out uh, lots of cardiac things really. Um, onset and duration. Uh, that's what we've already got. So it lists all of the questions you've already asked. So you can put it all together. And aggravating factors. Everything makes it worse. I used to exercise but can't walk more than te 10 steps now without feeling really short of breath. Okay. So apparently there's only 12 things it could be. Which are all these. Uh, let's ask about past history, medical history. We should probably ask alleviating factors because we don't have room for tests now. So Parkinson's, that doesn't tell us anything else because there's no other medical history. Medication history, uh, nothing else. And alleviating factors, resting sometimes helps. So we're probably thinking some kind of heart failure here at the moment. Right, we're going to do some tests now. And the obvious test to do, well, that would be an ECG, or as the Americans call it, an EKG, because for some reason they use a German-derived word. Uh, but because we're thinking heart failure, it's probably a better idea to do... Do we have it here? BMP. Let's do a chest x-ray, because if it's heart failure, that will tell us if there's any cardiomegaly. And we've got one more action point to we'll ask about general symptoms, why not? Mild cardiomegaly with acute pulmonary edema. Okay, this is, as I said, heart failure. The question now is, what kind of heart failure? These are apparently, so all of these can be ruled out pretty much from doing an echo, an echocardiogram. Oh, sorry, not that one, where is it? Can I just do a normal echo? So I'll just do this. Transfer asset, echocardiogram. And that should basically tell us what it is. Right, central jet, then on 43%. Let's have a look. Regurgitant. Thickened mitral leaflets with incomplete co coaptation. Uh, no commissural or caudal fusion noted. Okay. That's not how we display echo results in the UK, so let me just try and understand this. It sounds like they're trying to tell us that there's mitral stenosis because it's thickened mitral leaflets. Uh, regurgitant fraction. Oh, is that mitral regurg then? So I think what we need to say is one of these then. 
It sounds like they're trying to tell us it's mitral regurg, so I'm gonna just diagnose that. And I got it right. It turns out I do remember some cardiology after all. Right, do I get any points for this? It turns out, yes, I got two out of three. Eliminate more diseases in consecutive turns to earn higher scores. Okay, let's have a quick view of the case information. Oh, there's an abstract there. First, uh, Cabagoli related severe restricted mitral regurgitation. So apparently there is a link between Cabagoli and mitral regurg, which I assume if I were a cardiologist I might have uh, flagged earlier. Well, that's interesting. Another case. Uh, the next one is called Between a Rock and a Hard Place. A 30 year old male this time with dyspnea, that's breathlessness, on exertion and palpitations. Uh, that's the sensation of hearing or feeling your own heartbeat. Past medical history of early onset glaucoma, multiple trabeculectomies. Oh, now we're talking a bit of ophthalmology here. Delayed eruption of permanent dentition. Aggressive hand deformities, psoriasis, recovered nephrolithiasis, that's kidney stones, Achilles tendonitis, inflammation of the Achilles tendon, tendon rupture, hallux valgus, that's a deformity of the, th the thumb, and hypoplastic toenails, so his toenails aren't fully developed. This is of course pointing to some kind of genetic condition, isn't it? Some kind of congenital genetic condition, and I should be able to work out what it is considering it's got early onset glaucoma as part of it. Uh, now the eruption of permanent, delayed eruption of permanent dentition is pointing me towards something like uh, axenfeld riga syndrome, but we'll have a look. So let's ask questions first, uh, because history is always the most important thing. History is 90% of the diagnosis, as we say. Not so true anymore in the modern age. Chest pain, we're going to ask about duration, the onset. Actually, let's try something else this time. Let's do a test on some history from the, from the get go. Let's do an ECG. Or is the Americans called an EKG? When I try to exercise, I get a bit of pain around the centre of my chest. I would rate it as 6 out of 10. So pain on exertion, the chest pain on exertion is, is quite cardiac. The ECG shows uh, normal signs for it. That eliminates quite a lot of diseases, so they reckon there's six possible things it could be now. It's not gonna be uh, ischemic heart disease. It'll be the thorax. Contractions are likely restrictive cardiomyopathy. My bet is on aortic stenosis and restrictive cardiomyopathy because it sounds like it's a congenital thing, it's probably an aortic stenosis. But do I want to just go all in and just go straight for the echo? I think, yeah, let's do it. I'll be amazed if uh, this tells me the answer. Aorta revealed peak velocity of 3.126 meters per second. Aortic valve measured at 0.98 centimeters squared. Well, I do not have the normal figures memorized, so that doesn't tell me much. I'm gonna have to quickly Google uh, aorta valve area. Three to four centimeters squared. Okay, well if it's 0.98. Then, and the normal is three to four, that would suggest an aortic stenosis. So let's go with that. Well, apparently the alternative is chronic ischemic heart disease, which you're not gonna get in a 20 year old anyway, so let's diagnose aortic stenosis. Ta-da! Right, well, see how many points I get for that. The case information. Calcific aortic stenosis. I'm going to read all of this out for you. Third most frequent cardiovascular disease after coronary artery disease and systemic arterial hypertension. 0.4% of the general population. Now, does it say why this young guy had it? 
Singleton-Merton syndrome, a rare cause of early onset aortic stenosis. Well, I've never heard of that. Let's click on that. Oh, it takes me to a, a PubMed page. It's a rare autosomal dominant genetic disorder. Aortic calcification. Uh, breathlessness. Glaucoma, psoriasis. Oh, okay. So the case was actually based on this very specific case report. That's nice to know. There's the actual echo. Showing the aortic stenosis. Dysplastic permanent teeth. Hand deformities. Ah, so this game does actually uh, give you real cases. So back to the case. Um, level complete. 32,000 points. Uh, apparently I could have got 40,000 if I tried harder. Oh well. Done that. I uh, now apparently, it's, I don't know if that means level 6 or something. And let's do a third and final case for today. A change of hearts. An 18-year-old male, oh, well, they just get younger and younger, don't they? With past history of non-schemic dilated cardiomyopathy with severe systolic dysfunction and underwent orthotopic heart transplantation by lateral anastomosis, comes into the outpatient clinic presenting with palpitations. Well, I'm afraid I don't actually know what non-schemic dilated cardiomyopathy means, um, but the severe systolic dysfunction just means a problem with the actual pump function of the heart. Had a heart transplantation. This is way above my pay grade. Let's give it a go anyway. As always, we must start with history. Uh, let's do what I did last time by doing an ECG and one history question. What shall we ask? Let's ask about chest pain and the quality of the chest pain. normal sinus rhythm nothing to see here but it does rule out 13 diseases apparently chest pain and the quality of the pain tightness in the chest feels like my chest and neck are full okay well could be acute anxiety neck schemes last two in China Ooh, who knows who knows ask about past history and medications and is there anything that makes the pain worse? I don't know enough about uh, what people with heart transplants can get to, to go straight to things like echoes. So 10 years ago I had a heart transplant after he went into heart failure, non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, severe dystolic dysfunction. CPR. Uh, after that, got procedure called orthotopic heart transplantation. No signs of rejection. Echoes periodically, which show the heart's ejection fraction was normal. The ejection fraction is the the, uh, the best uh, indicator of how the heart's doing. Medication history. You mean suppressants, but no. Aggravating factors, nothing provokes it. Okay. So there's nothing, uh, there's, nothing there's, there's nothing sticking out. Let's see. We probably have to do cardiac at times to make sure that. Uh, no infarction or any sign of injury to the heart. And I'll ask about one saturation. CK. It's not the units we use in the UK, but CK looks fine.
things it can be apparently, aortic stenosis, probably not. Probably going to be that. Now, as for tests that can diagnose it, you can do an event monitor. Uh, that's probably the best thing right now. Let's do that. So, you basically give them a 24 hour ECG and it shows intermittent supraventricular arrhythmia, narrow QRS complexes. Okay. That is as good enough as telling us that that's the diagnosis there. So. Oh shit. So we're going to do a third and final case here. And then we will wrap up. A change of hearts. 18-year-old male patient with non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, space systolic dysfunction, underwent orthotopic heart transplantation. Okay. So, let's do an ECG, because that is instantly getting all that loads of things. And we're going to ask about his past history. necessarily the order I'd want to do it in in real life but I'm trying to eliminate as many diseases as possible and indeed we've just got rid of 13 because the ECG is completely normal. Asking about past history, that what was that all of these, his heart is apparently normal, this new heart that he's got, no signs of projection, he's had biopsies to prove it and it's got a normal ejection fraction which is kind of all that heart failure. Apparently it can be valve problems, they think vagina, lots of arrhythmias in that list. So what shall we ask next? Well, I'm going to do what I would have done in real life first, which is ask about the chest pain and quality of it. And then we could still have some kind of heart injury, and any heart injury will cause the cardiac enzymes to go up. So let's do that. Tightness in the chest feels like my chest and neck are full. Well, that doesn't really help much. It does one on pneumothorax according to this. Pneumothorax would probably be a sharp stabbing pain. Really. Um, cardiac enzymes seem pretty normal. The CK might be a bit raised. That's pretty non specific. Tripolin is normal though, and that's the important thing. Okay, we have six diseases remaining. Now, if he's got a normal ejection fracture. It's seeming like it's going to be some kind of arrhythmia. And we've had a normal ECG. So probably the best thing to do is either look at the causes of arrhythmias, like uh, thyroid function tests. Do any other blood test there, which is what I'd also want to do. So let's probably just go straight to the event monitor, which is basically 24 hour ECG, maybe even longer. Sometimes they can do loop recorders where they actually implant a little device. Intermittent supraventricular arrhythmia, narrow QRS complexes, frequency of 170 beat per minute. Visible retrograde P waves were also recorded. Okay, retrograde P waves means that. Uh, there's a, a wave of electricity going the opposite way, that is from the ventricle. The, instead of going from atrium to ventricle, the other way around. And you usually get that. Uh, let me have a look and see what there is. Yeah, it's quite non specific. Let me see. It's not a nodal re entry. So I can call it here. Two diseases remaining. Pretty much rules out that, so it has to be idiopathic ventricular tachycardia. It was supraventricular. Mm. Can I look back at the result? 
Charles. Seek ventricular arrhythmia. Narrow QRS complexes. Visible retrograde P waves. So you wouldn't normally get retrograde P waves with an AV nodal re entrance tachycardia. So I think it's going to have to be ventricular tachycardia. Hello, yo. So let's do a third and final case then, just to wrap up. We've got an 18 year old male with non ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, sphere systolic dysfunction, and he's had a heart transplant. Hmm, okay. He's come to clinic with palpitations, that's the sensation uh, or feeling that your heart is uh, beating. So we've got 29 possible things to be. And we're going to start by asking about chest pain, quality pain. Let's ask past history. And what else? Activating factors. So chest pain and quality of pain. Tightness in the chest feels like my chest and neck are full. Doesn't tell us much, that's uh, just a description of palpitation for really. well, some description of palpitations. Past history, now this is what eliminates a couple of things. Looking at that. So, had a heart transplant after going into heart failure. Got a heart transplant. Biopsies showed no sign of rejection. Echoes periodically show the ejection fraction is normal. So, the heart is pumping normally, so that rules out things like heart failure. Predating factors. Nothing provokes it. Well, that's good news, I guess, because that rules out a lot of uh, ischemic things, as you can see there. Right, there are apparently 30 diseases remaining. Well, the obvious thing to do is an ECG. And we've got one action point left, so we may as well ask about onset duration. So, normal ECG, completely normal. One set duration. Racing heart started occurring more frequently a couple of weeks ago. Sometimes it goes away after a minute or two, other times it can last as long as a half an hour. However, it doesn't happen every day. Okay. Right, this is clearly going to be an arrhythmia of some sort, an irregular heartbeat. The question is, what kind of rhythm? And we've got a normal ECG, which means it's, going to be, it's something that's intermittent, as is evident from the symptoms anyway. So the only thing we can really do here to see what it is, is this, an event monitor. So you can do a 24-hour ECG, sometimes a 48-hour ECG, or you can put in a loop recorder, uh, which is an implantable device. Intermittent supraventricular arrhythmia, narrow QRS complexes, frequency of 170 beats per minute. Visible retrograde P waves were also recorded. Retrograde means going backwards. That's interesting. Uh, so, we can rule out a ventricular tachycardia as it's told us it's supraventricular, which leaves us with these two inappropriate sinus tachycardia. Well, we know it's not sinus rhythm because the ECG told us. So, it's got to be an AV nodal re entry tachycardia, I guess. So let's diagnose that. That would fit with the symptoms as well. There we are. We've got it. Case complete. So that was a complex locking history to start with, with the whole heart transplant thing, which I have no idea about. But common things are common. Oh, I didn't make it to that three heart thing yet. And let's view the case information. And again, it seems this case is based on a real case report. AV nodal re-entry tachycardia in the transplanted heart. Yeah, gives the abstract. It's all based in real life. Complete. Did I level up? Oh, 
Oh, brilliant. I got a reward. Eliminate 150 diseases. Treat five different diagnosis patients. I should admit that I was doing some cases before I started recording just to get used to the app. So what do I think of this app? Well, it is actually very educational. It's very quick. It's simple to use. Um, and it is fairly entertaining. So yeah, it gets a thumbs up from me. Uh, in a future video, I can try some of the other things because you've got these diagnosis uh, option here, but there's also some mini games uh, with interventional cardiology. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, uh, feel free to watch my other medical videos.